We've got Chris in Greenville, South Carolina. Hey. How are you, Chris? I'm all right. Wait, this says South Carolina, and that says North Carolina. Which is it? Um, South Carolina. Aha. Um, the, uh, actually, the uh, previous caller kind of got me thinking about um, something uh, about, like, you know, demonstrable evidence or something that, you know, either there was the creator of the universe or there um, what What would you guys consider it? evidence for a creator or something like would it be like seeing a creation or something i mean uh, something created like out of nothing or something seeing something created out of nothing like in a you know verifiable context would certainly help to at least demonstrate that such a thing is done i mean i guess there's like virtual particles and i'm not really up on all of what's available for evidence on those whether they've been demonstrated to what degree but um, yeah, there are these things called virtual particles, which are a model that pops in and out of existence. I don't know how valid or invalid it is. But um, the, that's a, a fantastic question because the idea of would you accept a God, what would it take for you to believe in God, it, it ultimately depends on how they're defining the God. So yeah, I, I need to know what it is the claim is before I can say what it would take to demonstrate that claim. And I might not right. even be able to define what would demonstrate the claim. I've been handed really incoherent definitions of God before, where if someone asked me, what, what would it take for you to believe in this? I'm like, I don't know, because I don't even know what that is. I mean, you just defined it, but I have no clue what you're talking about. So it really depends on the claim. All right, well, I think that uh, a lot of people try to put the label of God on like some sort of like natural force or something like that. Something I've seen that. Occurring. Yeah, I've definitely okay. seen that. Yeah, the idea that God is nature. I've had people tell me God is energy. Um, pantheists love. say that God is the universe. Yeah, God, God is love. Um, ultimately, though, when you, start at, when you start looking at what energy is and you say, okay, is this what you're asserting your God is, you're going to get back no. So they'll define it and say, it's, you know, my God is energy. And then you say, okay, well, this is what energy is. Is this what you're saying your God is? And they respond and say no. So I, now I'm back to square one where I don't know what their God is. They're calling it energy, but when I tell them this is what I understand energy to be, and they're saying that's not what my God is. So then I, I'm it's back to... It's a different God. No. It's a different energy. So th there's and baggage in the word. It's, it drives me crazy. It's one of the reasons why I hate the word spiritual and spirituality, <laughs> because they're completely freaking useless labels. But this, the, the, the label that God that gets bandied about, people are like, oh, no, no, God is nature. God is love. God is energy. Or... Or God is all of us or some consciousness. Yet, no, no, no. The word carries some baggage with it because of its historical use. It would be wrong for me to say this coffee cup is God. It doesn't have any of the identifiable characteristics of any of the classical definitions of God where we get the baggage from. And the biggest one is this exists. I mean, there, there's one big difference for you right there. But the, it's, it's dishonest, disingenuous of people to, to try to argue God as something else. Hey, if God is energy and that's all, just use the word energy. All right. You don't get to add the word God and then ignore the baggage when it's convenient and yet use the baggage when it's convenient. You know, oh, God's energy, but... He really, really needs 20 bucks. Why? You know, it's, it, it's unfair. It's, it's not an intellectual argument. It is an attempt to sound accommodating. It is an attempt to sound sophisticated. It is an attempt to sound open-minded. And it is none of the above. It is childish and nonsensical. Yeah, you know, I, I pretty much agree with that, but um, the uh, you know I don't want to really sound like I'm a hundred percent agreeing agreeing with you guys that the fact that um I'm I'm just gonna like you know kind of go along with uh, you know the general your general thoughts. I I want to uh, present other ideas that um, conflict, so we can like either argue about something like that, so we can you know learn more or something like that. So the the uh, thing that I was mostly thinking about is, that, is to demonstrate, I guess, creation or something like that. I would consider if I saw something coming from nothing, 
evidence of creation. I wouldn't say that 100 percent evidence. Maybe there's some other you know, force behind it or something, but I would say that's pretty strong evidence. Let me just say that right now there is a model called a virtual particle that is, I, like I say, I don't know how demonstrated it is, but the, there seems to be some indicator that there are things that pop into manifestation that is measurable and then disappear and then pop in again. So you might want to look that up because my question would be, what if you had a particle that could wave in and out of measurable manifestation? That to you would be demonstration of creation? Um. I've seen I would something. Say, I would say no, that because it's sort of, I, I really don't know how to express my ideas about it. You know, I can't really find the right words. I, well, I wish I could, uh, I guess, articulate myself better. But um, I think one of the things we have to be careful about is, yeah, what you mean by something from nothing, sure, that would be evidence. Uh, the question is, how do you test and identify that? Because I've seen something apparently come from nothing. I've been to tons of magic shows where that happens. Um, the thing is, you need to devise some sort of testable conditions by which to demonstrate that, yes, in fact, there's nothing, and something has come from this nothing. And then once that's done, the only thing you know is that it is possible for something to come from nothing. In order to claim that, that you've identified the cause of this, you need additional evidence. It's much the same way we get tons of questions about cl claims of prophecy. Um, and while they are ridiculous to the point that it's not even worth going into now, if, if somebody makes a prediction and it comes true, I don't care what it is, calling a coin toss, that tells you nothing other than they made a claim and it came to pass. You don't know how they made that claim, did they, did they know that the coin was going to come up heads, tails, heads because they got lucky, because aliens were communicating with them, because some god told them, because they were manipulating the coin with their mind? You have no way of knowing from the thing itself what the cause is. You have to actually demonstrate the causal chain, not assume it. And I can't, I mean, there may be a way. I can't think of any way right now that a mere experiment about something from nothing, even if it could happen, would give you any evidence that would confirm the idea of a creator type being. I think that um, I don't have that much to say about that. I mean, you kind of cornered it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I stumped all over it. and. <laughs> but I, w I was hoping I was hoping that it, it would at least address, you know, the, what you were thinking about. And if so, then I'm fine. That's fair. So. Yeah, but, well, the thing that I sort of wanted to um, address was like, I, w I was going to sort of say that since you know the Big Bang theory, you know, so something came from nothing. Potentially, that's that. That's not what it that's says. That's not the theory. Oh. Uh, Okay. Uh, I guess I need to look some more stuff up about If that. you uh, email the list, I'll send you some links. Okay. Yeah, it's worth um, doing, and it's it's common misconception. This is, I mean, people, uh, in, in much the same way that I probably just said 20 things wrong when talking about quantum mechanics, although <laughs> I'd hope that somebody would have slapped me before I got to 20. Uh, it's an area that I don't know enough about. And by and large, most people don't have, and I'm, I'm included, I don't have any kind of great understanding about Big Bang cosmology or any, I'm not an astrophysicist or anything. Uh, but I have done, evidently, a little more studying than the average uh, theist, uh, the average creationist, I'll, I'll say, because they constantly come with the exact same claims that right. simply aren't true. Right. Uh, and, and they're easily resolved by going and picking up uh, a few books, a few articles by, what re by real scientists. Um, and some, some are better than others at explaining things in terms that any of us could grasp. So, and Tracy has links that would yeah. work good for that. Um, the, the, well, actually, the main, the main thing I was calling was necessarily about, you know, um, the, the Big Bang or, um, you know, or that's just being that there's 
a creator, I mostly just wanted to ask you guys, you know, what your thoughts were on um, on miracles, because I've like I've heard about them and I've seen people, um, you know, uh, one of my friends who was an atheist, he went to um, some church thing and they were they were praying about uh, this lady who was in a wheelchair. And apparently she'd been in a wheelchair for years and years and years, and they uh, prayed for her, and she actually ended up um, standing up in the wheelchair and walking around for the first time in years, you know, when they were in the church. I, I, I'll let Tracy address this, and, and I'm going to go ahead and, and clear the line because you've asked several questions. There's a bunch of people waiting. I'm going to let Tracy address this, but let me ask you one question. Do you think the story is true? Um, I don't think my friend would have any reason to lie about it. That's not what I asked. Okay. Um, yes, I do think that it happened. Okay. Uh, you want to take this? I'm going to... I mean, it's just, it's an anecdote. I don't know what else to say about it. it. It's it's a claim. And I don't know anything about the woman. I don't know anything about the situation. I don't know why she was in that wheelchair. I don't know how long after this healing ceremony she was able to walk around. I don't know if she was able to hobble, you know, before. I mean, being in a wheelchair doesn't mean you cannot walk. <laughs> you know, some people in wheelchairs cannot walk. Some people in wheelchairs have difficulty walking. And I have yet to see any verified uh, divine healing. I, yeah. I don't know what else to say to it. Yeah, my, my big problem here is that, and, and this is, I, I, I'm not attacking you, Chris. I'm trying to explain this. Your first response when I asked you if you believed it was that your friend didn't have any reason to, belot, to lie. Now, what that tells me is that the best reason you can think of for believing this is that it came from someone who doesn't have a reason to lie to you. Um, that's not good enough. That's not remotely good enough. Uh, it, there are plenty of people who have no reason to lie, who relay stories that aren't true. There's, you know, that, that they may believe um, or that they may be even doubtful of, but have heard second and third hands. Uh, and my response is, where is the scientific confirmation of these miracles? There, there, there isn't any. Well, it's just like the question of, you know, there's a lot of people that claim they've been abducted by aliens. Right. And they have no reason to lie. I mean, they're not like all getting rich or something. In fact, a lot of them are, are being ostracized as lunatics. And yet they're insisting they've been abducted and, you know, probed by aliens. If, if what, primary, what is their motive? If your primary criteria for believing something that you can't verify yourself is to determine whether or not the person who told you had a reason to lie... Think about all the things that you would be forced to believe. Um, wh whatever religion you may happen to adhere to, wouldn't you also have to believe all of the other ones? Because there are sincere believers in every religion who have no reason to lie, who will tell you their miracle stories and, and their, their religious beliefs. Wouldn't you be forced by those criteria to accept all of them? And how could you possibly do that? You need better criteria in order to, 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 to say that something is believable. And the, the more extraordinary the claim is, the better the evidence needs to be. It doesn't, we don't just say, well, I know it's an extraordinary claim and I really wish I had good evidence, but my mom told me and she wouldn't lie to me. Or even I saw it myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. plenty of times there have been, I've seen it myself. We things, had uh, the ghost story episode yeah. where we had somebody write in and say they'd seen a ghost. Chris, I appreciate the call. We're running out of time. i got to get some, some other callers on there. You're welcome to call back. Uh, next week I won't be here, but uh, Russell will, and I'm sure he'd like to talk to you too. If you get more questions or anything else.